In the seven letters to the churches in the Apocalypse, we learn about important events spanning seven ages after Atlantis. These ages include a major water catastrophe and a period known as the War of All Against All. Let's look at some key parts of these letters to understand John's perspective. He lived in a time when many things were taken for granted, which might seem strange to us now. The main force guiding these ages is symbolized by the seven stars. In an epoch where people saw the world as an illusion, there were seven holy rishis who pointed to Vishvakarman. The writer of the Apocalypse sees him as the one holding the wisdom of the seven stars. He also looks ahead, speaking to descendants of the Atlantean era, reminding them of past memories. He warns against black magic, represented by the Nicolaitans, urging people to hold on to their initial spiritual purity. He believes those who avoid getting too attached to the material world will evolve positively in the future. Moving on, he addresses people from the time of Zarathustra. He speaks to followers of Zarathustra, whose teachings are echoed in the writings of Hermes. These teachings emphasize the importance of embracing life in the physical world and seeing nature as a manifestation of the divine. Zarathustra aimed to connect the physical world with the spiritual, encouraging people to treat the earth with reverence, much like caring for the body of God. This idea was also present in the ancient Hebrew culture, as seen in Abraham's meeting with Melchizedek. Remnants of the second cultural era, influenced by Zarathustra's teachings, lingered on. Zarathustra strongly advised people to work with the earth, but not to become overly attached to material things. He warned against a power called Araman, which tempts people to focus solely on physical matter, leading them astray. Ahriman represents the danger of becoming too fond of physical life. In ancient Hebrew wisdom, Ahriman was known as Mephiz Tophel, or Mephistopheles. This figure, like the one who tempted Faust, symbolizes the allure of materialism. Just as Faust sought the spirit but was tempted by worldly pleasures, those on a spiritual path must resist the allure of materialism. The writer of the Apocalypse warned against being ensnared by matter, urging people not to fear but to remain vigilant. Human beings, according to this perspective, undergo multiple lifetimes on Earth in physical bodies, followed by periods in the spiritual realm. Eventually, this cycle of reincarnation will come to an end. The purpose of these reincarnations, as explained in the second letter of the Apocalypse, is for individuals to develop self-awareness, or what is known as the I Consciousness. The way the soul perceives the world has evolved across different cultural epochs. From the ancient Indian era to the present day, our perception has changed significantly. As the soul progresses through these stages, we gain an understanding of history both in the physical and spiritual realms. The life between death and rebirth varies in each cultural epoch, offering souls unique experiences. Describing this history requires focusing on distinct characteristics of each era. Looking back to ancient Atlantis, humans dwelled in their spiritual essence while on Earth. During the ancient Indian era, they remained connected to the spiritual realm even after passing through death's gate. In this original state, their surroundings were bright and illuminated. However, as people grew more attached to the physical world, their vision of the spiritual realm dimmed gradually. In the Egyptian culture, humans became firmly rooted in the physical world, needing guidance on how to connect with Osiris in the afterlife. The teachings of the Book of the Dead and the concept of the Judges of the Dead aimed to help individuals unite with the light of Osiris, ensuring a luminous spiritual existence after death. Moving to the Greco-Latin age, people became deeply enamored with the physical world, expressing ideals through tangible forms. This era saw individuals valuing earthly poverty over shadowy kingship in the afterlife. There was a genuine belief that descending into Hades meant entering darkness, Humanity faced the risk of losing itself in sensory experiences, prompting divine intervention. Zarathustra revealed Ahura Mazda through the sensory world's veil, while Yahweh revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush within the realm of senses. 
Later, this same divine force manifested as Christ in the body of Jesus of Nazareth. The events surrounding Christ's crucifixion held significance not only for the physical realm, but also for the spiritual. At the moment of Christ's bloodshed, he appeared in the underworld to souls awaiting reincarnation. As his blood flowed in the physical realm, the realm of the dead began to brighten. The more our culture embraces a spiritual understanding of the crucifixion's significance, the brighter this realm becomes. History pervades both the physical and spiritual realms. The overarching purpose of our cultural evolution since Atlantis is to guide humanity through the material world while nurturing faith in the spirit. This principle remains consistent across successive cultural epochs. The writer of the Apocalypse, with his clairvoyant insight, observes a trend among certain individuals who are becoming overly absorbed in materiality, neglecting their spiritual connection and drifting away from Christ. Such individuals risk losing their connection to Devachan, a spiritual realm, and becoming more entangled in earthly matters, prolonging their stay in Kamaloka, an intermediate state after death. Today, only those deeply entrenched in black magic completely shut themselves off from spiritual wisdom. Ordinary people are not yet capable of such detachment. The writer of the Apocalypse emphasizes Christ's redemptive impulse as the saving grace for humanity. This is why the second letter warns of a second death, referring to spiritual death, a concept also discussed by Paul. This admonition is directed at the second cultural epoch, as in the first epoch, such warnings were unnecessary. In the second letter, the guiding spirit identifies himself as the Alpha and the Omega. This symbolism holds significance across occultism, representing the beginning and end or the entirety of existence. In ancient Egyptian culture, wisdom was revered, especially when expressed through words. The power of the spoken word, symbolized by the sword, signifies the humanization of divine power. This concept is echoed in the letter to the community in Pergamon, where the angel is described as wielding a sharp two-edged sword. However, knowledge can also lead individuals astray into black magic. Therefore, while the sword symbolizes the humanization of divine power, it also serves as a reminder of the potential for misuse and deception through knowledge. In the Bible, the power of God is symbolized by mana, which sustains humanity. Yahweh, the unpronounceable name of God, reveals himself to Moses in the burning bush on Mount Sinai, declaring, I am the I am. This intimate name of God, the I am, is sacred and resides within human hearts. It signifies a personal connection with the divine, represented by the hidden manna mentioned in Revelation. Those who overcome spiritual challenges are promised this hidden manna and a white stone with a new name written on it. Christ's incarnation on earth teaches humans not to reject earthly existence, but to recognize its significance. Rather than rejecting the physical world like ascetics, humans are encouraged to purify their desires and find meaning in earthly endeavors. Work done on earth, symbolized by moving hands, contributes to spiritual growth and is carried into the afterlife. In Buddhist teachings, legends speak of Kasapa, an important disciple of Buddha, who is said to have disappeared into a cave instead of dying. His physical body awaits the return of Maitreya Buddha, who will dissolve it with heavenly fire. This legend illustrates how those aligned with Christ's impulse carry the fruits of their earthly deeds into the spiritual realm. The teachings of the Orient, including Buddhism, have long foretold the coming of Christ. In the fourth post-Atlantean epoch, the transition from the earthly to the spiritual realm becomes more direct, symbolized by Christ's eyes like flames of fire and his feet like burnished bronze. Christ, as the embodiment of the I Am, leads humanity out of the material world and into spiritual salvation. Each word and line of the text can be interpreted in this light, emphasizing the transformative power of Christ's teachings. The fifth letter in Revelation, Reverend 3, 1, 6, holds particular significance for us. It reveals that we have been entrusted with the secret of the divine name through teachings about the Earth's evolution, imparted by the masters of wisdom and the harmony of feeling. 
These teachings are profound and offer insights into the deeper mysteries of existence. The End Thanks for listening to this enlightening audio experience. If you enjoyed what you heard, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking content. And remember, the journey doesn't end here. Stay curious, stay inspired, and keep exploring the wonders of the world. Until next time, take care and keep seeking knowledge.